Okay, video two for flipping cars. Now, I, it sucks I'm such a random person because there's gonna be such random information in these videos and I apologize for not sitting down and making a list of things to say each time, but it is what it is. So, this is more or less things that you need to be ready for before doing it. One, you have to be able to be you can't take your savings. Um, you can't take all your money and be like, cool, I'm going to spend this $3,000 on this car and hope for a win. That's just straight gambling, and that's dumb. Um, don't get me wrong, it could pay off, but you could lose all your money. So don't gamble with money that you can't lose, okay? Um, stay away from cars or trucks that are super rusty unless you can get them at significantly below value because the first thing everyone else is gonna hit you on is that there's too much rust and they're gonna try and knock you down on price. Uh, plus on top of that, it makes it difficult to work on the vehicle because if the body's rotted out, usually bolts are stuck and bolts are rotted and just a pain. Um, stay, try not to buy vehicles local to you. Try to drive at least 100 miles or more to pick up a vehicle because the thing is, is that people are lazy. People don't want to drive places. People will can be literally, so where I am in Wausau, Eau Claire is 100 miles away. People aren't going to drive from here to Eau Claire to buy a $3,000 car. They're not going to do it. I mean, don't get me wrong, someone will do it. The average person is not going to do it, which means they're less likely to be looking at that car in that area. You don't want to buy a car that's local for $3,000, wash it, make it look fancy, and put it up the next day for $6,000 in the same exact city that you live in. Because anybody who's been car shopping, the average person does shop for cars more than a day at a time, is going to be like, the hell? Like, I literally just saw that car yesterday for three grand. F that dude. And some people get mad about that stuff, and they will go out of their way to post on every post you make and being like, hey, everybody, this dude bought this car for $3,000 and washed it. Um, you got to respect the hustle. Other people don't. So try to go distance. Um, you know, take every vehicle that you're going to look at, blue book them, and get what the actual blue book private party is, and then look up the exact same vehicle across marketplace and make sure that you're not getting yourself screwed. Just because the blue book's at five grand doesn't mean people will actually pay five grand for it. For example, I had a 17 STI, it blue booked at $30,000. When I posted it for $30,000, I got about a hundred reactions from people with a laughing emoji saying that it was too much. Even though that's literally what it was worth, no one would buy it. And then there's vehicles that are the other way around that are worth more are selling for more than what they're worth. For example, trucks. Right now, Cat Eye Silverados, as long as they're not LLY and rusty, uh, are selling for way more than they used to sell for. Trucks that I could buy five years ago for freaking $1,500 are selling for $8,000 now. It is ridiculous. You know, and like I said in the previous video, stick to your market. Stick to vehicles that you're familiar with that you're knowledgeable in and stick to that market. If you're gonna go into a different market of vehicles, do as much research as possible before you go out of your way to do that. Um, so this was just, wanted to hit on a bunch of like random pointers and things like that um, first in this video before we start going into videos showing you how to do a lot of this stuff. Um, don't buy cars from friends. Um, especially if they meant something to them because you're going to get rid of the vehicle. Um, don't sell cars to friends or people you know. Um, I don't sell flip cars to friends or people I know. One, because uh, you don't make as much money on them because they're your friends, so you want to give them a good deal on the car. Uh, and two, you don't know the full history of the car and you might not have it for a long period of time. You're going to look like a jerk off if you sell your friend a car and two weeks later the head gasket blows. Not that it's your fault, but you're going to feel bad because your friend spent money on this car buying it from you for it just to blow up. Um, 
I have two vehicles that I sold to someone that I know, uh, my tattoo artist. Um, and the only reason I gave him both those vehicles is because I knew how reliable they were ahead of time. I would never give a vehicle to somebody that tattoos my skin that could be a piece of crap because, um, well, one, they put stuff on your body permanently. Uh, two, I'm friends with the person. Don't ever, it goes back to it before, don't screw anyone over, especially people that you're friends with or related to. Um, something big too. Again, this don't screw anyone over. But for an example, a friend of mine did a job on a relative of mine's vehicle. And I told them beforehand, do not make mistakes on this vehicle. He's got money, which means he will come to you for everything he does in the future if you do a good job. What I didn't say, he has money, which means he has reach, which means if you do F it up, he could really hurt your business. That, I should, you shouldn't have to say that. That goes with it. People typically that have a lot of money have a lot of reach. Again, don't screw anyone over and try not to make any mistakes that might hurt you or the person you're selling the car to down the road. Um, last but not least, try to stay away from vehicles with rebuilt titles. Rebuilt title vehicles are typically worth 30% less of the ve of an identical vehicle. If you're going to get one with a rebuilt title, it has to be immaculate and typically needs some really nice wheels or a ton of modifications to justify somebody else to purchase it. If you get a rebuilt title Chevy Cruze, and you're not going to sell it for $5,000 because somebody that's buying the car for their daughter or their child is not going to risk buying a rebuilt title vehicle for barely less than a standard title vehicle that has never been in an accident. So stay tuned. Uh, another video is coming soon. Uh, the video, the next video that I'm going to be doing is going to be one that goes over how to basically talk someone down on their vehicle to get the vehicle for less without, again, without cheating them or screwing them. So stay tuned.